Hello everyone and welcome to my kitchen. Today at Witch Hollow Homesteading, I'm going to be making homemade cashew yogurt. This is something new that I got into within the last three months or so. I love yogurt. It is one of my favorite things to eat. However, vegan yogurt is really expensive and I never like the ones that have all the sugar in them. So I always get unsweetened, but when you get unsweetened, you usually can't get flavored. So <laughs> I, I make do with what I can get, but I finally decided to learn how to make my own homemade cashew yogurt. And I have to say, it is way more delicious than anything I've ever bought in the store. So let's get started and I'll show you how I make it. We will start by soaking one and a quarter cups of organic cashews in two cups of filtered water. We're gonna soak the cashews for about eight hours. If you wanted to speed up the process, you could soak the cashews in boiled water, put a lid on it, and let it sit for about two hours. There are a lot of different ways out there in order to make yogurt. I looked into all of them. I was trying to figure out if I was gonna use an Instapot, if I was gonna buy a yogurt maker, if I was gonna use a dehydrator, or put the yogurt in the oven with the light on for 24 hours and let it ferment. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. However, I ended up deciding on buying this yogurt maker, which is a Lavelli. I'm not sponsored. I'm just telling you why I bought this one. When I was looking at yogurt makers after I made the decision to pick one, they all had so much plastic in them, whether the containers were plastic or the lids were plastic. And we try to avoid all plastic touching our food if we can. This yogurt maker, however, is all glass with a silicone lid on top, and it's perfect. If you are interested in making your own yogurt and you don't have a yogurt maker or an Instapot, I would highly recommend this yogurt maker. It works really well, and even to the point that I bought one for my mom for Christmas because I loved it so much. So if you don't have a yogurt maker and you wanna try fermenting your yogurt in another method, you definitely can. You can still use my recipe and just choose to ferment in any way that you prefer. We're gonna start by sterilizing the utensils, the pot, and the yogurt maker that we're going to use. I'm not sure this step is really necessary. And as I've made this recipe multiple times, I've started where I just sterilize the thermometer and then the glass yogurt jar that I'm gonna ferment the yogurt in. The cashews have been soaking for about six hours. I'm gonna drain off the excess liquid from the cashews, but I'm going to use the liquid that the cashews were soaking in. In total, we are going to need four cups of filtered water. I'm gonna begin by only adding two cups of the filtered water in with the cashews to start grinding them. When it comes to the probiotic that you are using, there are many options out there. I bought this non-dairy yogurt starter. I actually love it. It's really, really good and it works super well when fermenting the yogurt. I have seen people use probiotic capsules and I have also seen people use current active live cultured yogurt. You can do all those things. I actually just prefer using this packet. I feel that the yogurt comes out a bit more tangy. Let's get our cashews grinding up. We're gonna blend them on medium high for about three minutes. After three minutes, we're gonna turn the blender off and add the additional two cups of filtered water. Then we're gonna turn it back on to medium high and blend for another three to five minutes. We're doing that because we want it to be really, really smooth and creamy, and we don't want any pulp left in our yogurt. The reason I'm using cashews here and not almonds, 
I have tried almonds with this, and while almonds have a delicious taste, you can't leave the pulp in because almond pulp does not grind up smoothly, even after soaking the almonds for 24 hours. It doesn't grind up smoothly, so I like to stick with the cashews as they are creamier. Let's take our cashew milk and pour it right into the cook pot. And we're not going to filter out any pulp because the pulp is going to be part of the thickening agent. To help this yogurt thicken a little bit more, I'm going to add two tablespoons of organic cornstarch. Let's get this pot on the stove. We're going to put it at medium heat at first and then we're going to lower it to medium low and right at the end we're going to put it on low heat. We're going to whisk this continuously. As you can see, I'm kind of vigorously doing it right now. That's just to make sure that all the cornstarch properly incorporates and we don't have any lumps. I will lighten up on this whisking a little bit later on as it thickens. What we're looking to do here is take this to 87 degrees Celsius and the conversion on that is 188 degrees Fahrenheit. The only reason I'm doing it in Celsius is because I can't get my Insta thermometer to switch to Fahrenheit. Once it hits 87 Celsius or 188 Fahrenheit, you're gonna lower the heat just a little bit more so that it'll stay at that consistent temperature. And you're gonna set a timer for five minutes and make sure during that five minutes that you whisk continuously. It's been five minutes. Now I took the pot off the heat and I placed it in a spot where it can cool. And every 10 minutes or so, maybe 15, I'm gonna come over and just whisk it like this, just so that it doesn't get a skin on the top. It takes about an hour for the yogurt to cool down to the right temperature. It needs to be cooler than 43 degrees Celsius or 109 Fahrenheit before you add your yogurt starter. If you add your starter when it is still warm, you do run the risk of killing off your culture. I checked the temperature and we're ready to go, so I whisked it around a little bit before I add it to my glass yogurt maker. I'm gonna pour it in here and then to this, I'm going to add my starter culture. And then I'm gonna add one teaspoon of organic cane sugar. The sugar is needed at this step so that it can help feed the culture. I'm going to gently whisk the yogurt and then I'm going to just take a spatula and scrape down the sides, making sure everything is mixed well. Put the lid on and get ready to add this to your yogurt maker. For my type of yogurt maker, I place it in and then around the outside, I add water and there's a line in the back to check to make sure that you don't add too much water. And this helps to keep the yogurt at a specific temperature. I like to ferment my yogurt at 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius for 16 to 17 hours. The length of time you ferment your yogurt is all gonna depend on how tangy you want your yogurt to taste. If you want it to have more of a sharp tang to it, you would ferment it up to 24 hours. If you don't want it to be that sharp, you could ferment it anywhere from 10 to 12 hours. It's been 16 hours and my yogurt is ready. So excited. What I'm gonna do is pull it out and dry off the outside of the glass jar. You do have a couple options here now when it comes to putting it in the refrigerator. One, you can take the lid off and you can dry the inside of the jar where all the water has gathered so that that water doesn't go into your yogurt and make your yogurt watery. So that is an option. For me, I've done this when I've been short on time. When I have a little bit of additional time, what I'll do is actually take the yogurt out of this glass jar, put it in a mesh strainer with a cheesecloth, 
over a glass bowl or a metal bowl, cover it with a lid and put it in the refrigerator. And that will help take out the excess liquid in your yogurt so that it'll just be nice and thick and creamy. The yogurt looks so good. It's so creamy and it smells amazing. It has that little tang like yogurt has. Before you add flavoring or anything like that, we're just gonna take the yogurt now and put it in the refrigerator for at least six hours to allow it to cool down. It's been six hours and we're now ready to flavor our yogurt. You can flavor your yogurt any way you like or you can leave it unflavored. Here, I'm wiping off the inside of the glass yogurt maker again, as there is condensation buildup, and I just wanna make sure that excess liquid doesn't go into the yogurt. Before we flavor the yogurt, there are some options about reculturing a new batch of yogurt. You can use the starter culture that I used in the beginning of this, or, you can save 65 grams of your unflavored yogurt and then use that to culture your next batch of yogurt. I have done both. I will say I have noticed that if you use a previous batch to reculture a new batch of yogurt, it does work the first two times. And then by the third time, it almost seems like the culture isn't strong enough so that the yogurt doesn't have a strong yogurty taste. So for me, I will only use a previous batch to reculture one batch of yogurt, and then the next time I make yogurt, I will just use a new starter pack of culture. There are a lot of things that I like to use the unflavored yogurt for. One of them being, I can use it as a mayo substitute. So here I'm making pasta salad, and before I flavored this yogurt, I wanted to put the unflavored yogurt in the pasta salad. It comes out tasting so delicious and so creamy that you don't even know you're not filling it with mayo. And it's a really healthy alternative. I also like using unflavored yogurt as sour cream or adding it to potato salad. Now I'm ready to flavor my leftover yogurt. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of organic vanilla paste And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of sugar. If you add sugar in this final step, just make sure that you whisk it really well, let it sit for a few minutes, whisk it again, let it sit for another minute or two, and then whisk it again before you put it in the storage container because you need to give the sugar time to properly dissolve. I wanna make note here that you can add as much sugar or as little sugar as you would prefer at this step. For us, we don't like a lot of sweet foods. So here I only added two tablespoons of sugar. The yogurt is now ready. I'm gonna put it in a jar and place it in the refrigerator and it's ready to be eaten. It's such a great handy snack to have and it's so healthy for you. It's so good for your gut. Homemade yogurt is gonna last for about two weeks in the refrigerator. However, we will eat this in about three days. I wanted to show you what I did quickly with the pasta salad that I put the yogurt in. I added some salt, pepper, dried herbs from our garden, along with a little bit of cider vinegar. And now I'm just gonna mix up the pasta salad and put it in the refrigerator to let it sit for a couple hours. I also added about a tablespoon of mayo, just so it had a little bit of oil in it. As an evening snack, I like to have yogurt, and I'll show you what I do. I like to put some yogurt in a bowl and add as many fresh berries as I can. I'll top it with some fresh homemade sourdough granola. 
I will show you how to make this sourdough granola recipe in a later video. It's super easy to make and it's so delicious and filled with nutrients. Thank you so much for joining me today at Witch Hollow Homesteading. I hope you found this video helpful and inspiring. Thank you.